take three celebrities, send them off to a remote house in the country, then seal them in. With no computers, TVs, newspapers or mobile phones, they'll be completely cut off from the outside world. So how will they know what's been going on while they've been in the bubble? Good evening. I'm David Mitchell and welcome to the last show in this series of The Bubble. The show where we ask three celebrities to spend a week completely cut off from the outside world. No newspapers, no TV, no internet, nothing. So they've missed the budget. Lucky sods. <laughs> On the downside, they won't know that under Alistair Darling's new three-day vacancy rule, all their homes have been repossessed to help reduce the national debt. <laughs> Before we set them free, we're going to show them a selection of news reports. Some of them are genuine, some of them have been faked, but will they be able to tell the difference? So let's meet tonight's guests. Straight from the bubble, please welcome Miranda Hart, Robert Webb and Shappy Corsandi. <laughs> Hello and welcome all. Hello. Hello, Hello, David. Thank you for having us, David. <laughs> <laughs> so you've no idea what's been happening in the world. You're assuming it's fairly light-hearted, because... They know that this show is on, so they've been trying to keep world events fairly <laughs> up. Fairly yeah, light. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. But also, the show hasn't been pulled because, you know, of some horrible asteroid yeah. hitting Brazil. <laughs> and, anything else that you hope might have happened? I was hoping that the government had announced a pilot scheme to build a raised platform above the whole area of Notting Hill and, and, and build on there uh, an artificial beach and a working, lovely country pub and a five-bedroom house with extensive grounds. And then what the scheme is they do with that is they give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was hoping they would have announced. Just a right. pilot scheme, because I might not like it. <laughs> And also, the last thing you want is when you're there on your lovely platform with your beach and your swimming pool, but still with easy access to central London... Exa this is my thinking, ..is David. to see all the other bloody platforms that are getting put up by yeah. other people. Yeah, no, I'm going, I'm going off this oh. idea. <laughs> Isn't this lovely? Have you missed this each other? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... Lovely. We looked after him well. Did you miss him? Were you all right? I missed him terribly. Yeah. But, of course, we can't natter away like we usually do on the television. <laughs> we'll have to get on with the news show. Yes, yeah. so let's do the news show. Um, Can I just say what was really touching? is finding out that Rob refers to you as my David. <laughs> because we were in the middle of a conversation about the novelist David Mitchell, so I had to, you know, no, make some distinction. Weren't. I didn't want to say bastard David and idiot David. Or, yeah. You know, it's my David and the other David. Right, well, I have no intention of being cute. Yeah. <laughs> OK. We start with some stories from the newspapers. Three stories, and only one of them genuinely did feature in the papers while you were inside the bubble. The other two are fakes. Can you tell the difference? Here's story A. Hoon's a jammy sponger. <laughs> it emerged this week that former Cabinet Minister Jeff Hoon was paid £20,000 by Sir Philip Green, the retail tycoon, to pop out of a cake during a birthday party he organised recently for Kate Moss. For that cash, Tony Blair would probably have done it, but he was busy that night pole dancing for King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Robert, does uh, that seem plausible to you? I think popping out of a cake, I think even Hoon draws a line there. <laughs> he thinks it's beneath him. He wrongly thinks it's beneath <laughs> him to pop out of a cake. Do we know that Kate Moss is sufficiently a fan enough of <laughs> Jeff <laughs> We don't know that Hoon was the first choice. Could have been that Kate Moss really had a heart set on Roy <laughs> Hattersley. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't find a big enough cake. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I think it's untrue because I can't imagine cake. Cake would eat Kate. Kate, that thing. Well, you don't eat those cakes. You know, he doesn't get baked in. <laughs> <laughs> I think the jumping out cakes are fake, fake cakes. It looks like a real cake, but and then it turns like... out to be just a vessel a for cake. Hoon. That's what's... <laughs> That's what's charming. 
Well, you've got your doubts about how low Hoon may or may not have sunk, so let's have a look at story B. Uh, this is Lost Their Marbles. This is the news that the Greek Olympic team will boycott the 2012 Olympic opening ceremony in a protest over the Elgin Marbles. Miranda, any, any thoughts? Well, you see, this is really embarrassing. I don't know what the Elgin Marbles are. The Elgin Marbles? Is that marbles? really embarrassing? Please tell me someone else doesn't know. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> There was this British composer called Don't Elgin. Don't patronise me! <laughs> British composer Elgin, and he yes. had... He liked to play with marbles. Yeah. <laughs> and then suddenly the Greeks came along and said, no, we want your marbles. Right. And the British Museum t intervened to stop them having a fight, and so they kept them for a long time. <laughs> the composer Elgin was so upset to lose his marbles that he went mad, hence the expression, losing so your, your marbles. marbles. Yes. <laughs> or... The actual truth is that they're marbles from the Parthenon that have been in the British Museum for 200 years and the Greeks are constantly banging on about wanting them <laughs> back. Right. Well, that could then be true. That's exactly why it's a plausible story. But, <laughs> um, to you, it's just obviously some... a random series yeah. of incomprehensible words. But, <laughs> Thank you. You pleased you booked me. <laughs> we're very pleased we booked you. Um, Your good value. <laughs> OK, we'll have a look at story C. Uh, this is Wham Bam, Sam Cam to be Mam. Oh, no. Yes, this week it was announced that Samantha Cameron is pregnant. Apparently oh. she's been feeling nauseous and throwing up in the morning, but then when David's on the Today programme, who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> I believe that because she's... I think even you guys wouldn't... Go wham bam Sam Cam to be ma'am, she'll need a new pram. You, you, <laughs> you just think that's too silly. And that's, that's too silly for a comedy show, show that must have been in a newspaper. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Well, I think the time has come to vote. So let me recap the stories. Is it A, mm. Jeff Hoon pockets £20,000 for popping out of Kate Moss's birthday cake? B, Greece to boycott Olympic opening ceremony over the Elgin marbles? Or C, Samantha Cameron announces her pregnancy? Please vote A, B or C now. Oh, we, we have a full range of answers. I, always, I love that. <laughs> Look at you. Uh, I, I need to get a life. <laughs> Miranda has gone for Samantha Cameron's pregnancy, uh, Rob for Greece boycotting uh, the Olympic opening ceremony, and Chappie for Jeff Hoon jumping out of a cake. <laughs> I'm very glad you consider that plausible. I wish you were right. In fact, Miranda is. Yes. <laughs> yes. Too stupid now, Elgin's yeah. marbles. <laughs> yes. You cover yeah. Elgin's marbles, <laughs> Yes, uh, she's pregnant. We assume David's the father, though, let's remember. <laughs> what Lord Ashcroft wants, Lord Ashcroft <laughs> gets. <laughs> Just before you went into the bubble, Samantha Cameron was also in the news. A risque photo shoot that uh, she'd been involved in in the 1990s was, was published. Oh, I mean, risque. I think that's what Telegraph readers think pornography is. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, but this one's a little bit... Oh, Ooh, I say. Yes, I mean, it looks like she wants us to see her pussy. Yes. <laughs> Actually, Dave Mitchell said pussy, it's wrong. <laughs> it's all right, I was, I, was merely, I was merely innocently punning because in this picture you can see her pussy. Hooray! It's okay. Oh, I thought you meant vagina. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just looks like she's yeah. fallen off a balcony and broken both her legs. <laughs> Do you think there's anything cynical about the timing? On the, on the Sunday, you've got the, the raunchy photos coming out. On the, whatever it is, the Tuesday, she announces her pregnancy. Oh, on the Sunday, they're saying shaggable. On yeah. the Tuesday, they're saying shagged. <laughs> <laughs> they're sort of saying, see, David's nailed her. Yeah. <laughs> He's the leading chimp in this pack. Yeah. Leave the old one-eyed loser to yeah. toss himself off in his swinging tyre. <laughs> Mm. 
and uh, you, you believed Hoon's antics. I Shafi. thought I thought I'd give him and Kate a chance. Well, I think I think it was a plausible story because Jeff, whom it seems will do quite a lot of things for money, this week he was among the politicians caught out by a Channel Four programme as willing to lobby for cash. And he was caught saying to the fake lobbyists, one of the challenges, I think, which I'm really looking forward to, is sort of translating my knowledge and contacts about the sort of international scene into something that bluntly makes money. <laughs> Who else do you think might have been caught out in this sting? Byers is always a bit of a squirt, isn't he? Byers, yes. No. Yes, yeah, Stephen no. Byers. <laughs> yeah. Well Stephen done. Byers. Yeah. Well done. Ooh. Yeah. Byers was caught uh, by the same uh, programme, and he said, I'm a bit like a sort of cab for hire, I suppose, <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> and a Tory court was Sir John Butterfill. <laughs> <laughs> and Butterfill told the undercover reporter, it's quite likely that I will go to the Lords. <laughs> After the programme was transmitted, David Cameron said, I can tell you that's not going to happen. <laughs> Butterfill's claimed another 50 grand for butter. <laughs> How much butter does it take to fill Butterfill? <laughs> We've never oh. filled Butterfill yet. He loves butter. <laughs> uh, we've got a picture of Butterfill. <laughs> <laughs> he loves butter. <laughs> Good old <laughs> Butterfill. They've managed to Photoshop out all of the butter. Yeah. <laughs> well, at, at the end of that round, Miranda gets a point. That's it. Yay. Moving on to TV news, you're going to see three news reports, but once again, only one of them is real and has been broadcast while you were inside the bubble. The other two are fakes. Can you spot the real story? Let's have a look at report A. Meet 79-year-old Denise Crilly, Britain's number one female in the Pensioner Boxing Championships on the Wii. The virtual gaming console has taken off amongst pensioners across Europe, and now it's showtime. <laughs> Tomorrow, Denise will compete in the European final of the International Wii Ultimate Boxing Pensioners Competition. I've got just the nearly the knack, I think, to just, ooh, just get it just like that. And we're going to go for a broke. We're going to go for the gold. And this is who Denise is up against, Josephine Girard, the reigning French champion. She took up virtual boxing two years ago as a way to keep fit. I adore it. I really let off steam. Yes. Yes. You move everything. Your arms, your legs, your head. La tête. Denise's opposition across the channel may think she can pack a mean left hook, but this English heavyweight certainly looks set to knock out the French competition. So, for once, a refreshing story about pensioners and we. Um, <laughs> so, Miranda, what, what do you think about that? I kind of think it might be true because the thought of making this and going, let's get old women to look really stupid and do weird moves would be sort of wrong. Do sort of my theory. They do sort of look sufficiently yeah. mad enough to and be real. And also, I didn't understand a word the first woman said. <laughs> um, so again, I kind of think. If do you that think was maybe a... they were both French? <laughs> she wasn't French, the first one. No, 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 it was she a wasn't. joke. No, no, it was a yeah. joke. <laughs> yes, it was a joke. I see, I see, I see. Sorry. He yeah. normally has a little card. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, so, yeah so. <laughs> so I think if that was an actor, you would have said, could you please say it so we can understand you? But you can't do that because she was be potentially actor, real. It would be a supporting artist who are all bonkers anyway. Oh, so. look at you, you wanker. <laughs> Extras are all mad, which so. you know perfectly well from your eponymous sitcom that they are. Anyway, David. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's have a look at report B. High inflation. The recession. Global downturn. In hard times, words like recession, deficit and inflation leave a bad taste in the mouth. The recession. Unless, of course, you happen to be in Dukes' theatre in Lancaster. Since 2003. Every time the Chancellor delivered some bad news, this vending machine delivered some good news. A free packet of crisps. This is no ordinary vending machine. 
It is in fact an art installation rigged up to a BBC news feed and programmed to respond to certain words with a free packet of crisps. But what does this bizarre budget artwork actually mean? It's a project by an artist called Ellie Harrison. She developed it when the recession first kicked off last year, so it was looking at those sort of issues. Well, the budget certainly drew a crowd, but was it thanks to fiscal policy or the freebies on offer? To actually have something that, when money's mentioned, gives something away is quite... Well, I think it's quite um, exciting, really. It was always going to be a hard budget to digest, but at least here in Lancaster, art has made it a little more savoury. So, a unique installation there, a vending machine that works. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, did you believe that? I'm not sure if I, if I believe that they could make a machine that does that. I didn't believe it because the voiceover artist sounded just like Miranda. Do you know, it's weird you should it's say, I thought that was, like was me when yes. it first started. <laughs> Is that me? Is that me? I did. Was it you, Miranda? No. <laughs> well, let's have a look at report C. Yellow. But is Her Majesty wearing her political colours on her sleeve? A leaked memo shows the Labour Party wrote to Buckingham Palace in November, asking the Queen to wear the Liberal Democrats' colour less often. I'm not saying remotely for a moment that this indicates that she is a paid-up member of the Nick Clegg Society. However, there are messages that are being sent out there. They may be subliminal, but they are messages all the same. But some royal watchers dismiss the idea. The Queen wears a, a varied wardrobe. She always looks fantastic. What, what can she wear? She can't wear blue either and she can't wear red. So that leaves her with what, green and black? Absolutely flabbergasting. A Buckingham Palace spokesperson said the Queen's dress was a personal matter, not a cause for media speculation. The Queen wears yellow when Lib Dem leaders come to the palace for drinks, though she once had to change after Charles Kennedy missed the bucket. Um, <laughs> Chappie, uh, does that sound likely to you? They do start focusing on the Queen's elections, like, oh, what way does she vote? And everyone yeah. knows she votes green. Well, as she I'm can't, not she's not allowed to vote. Sure I knew allowed. that. I right. knew that. <laughs> OK, yes. <laughs> I'm gutted I got something about the Queen wrong because I met her once when she opened Ealing Broadway Shopping Centre and I just feel like we had a bond. Did you ask that her how then. she votes? <laughs> <laughs> that's, quite a, that's quite a personal yes, she question. she green. Oh, really? Crying <laughs> <laughs> bitch. <laughs> so what's looking most plausible to you at the moment? It's either A or B is, is, is truest in I'm my head. I'm saying what he's saying because he is clever. <laughs> Well, I think the time has come to vote, so let me recap the stories for you. Is it A, pensioners prepare for international wee boxing competition, B, vending machine gives away crisps during budget speech, or C, the Queen is accused of dressing in yellow to show support for the Lib Dems? Please vote A, B or C now. Miranda and Rob have both gone for the pensioners in the wee boxing competition, and... Chappy believes that the Queen's been accused of bias towards the Lib Dems. Well, I'm very happy to say that you're all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the, re <laughs> the real answer is B, the vending machine programme to give away free crisps when Darling said certain words in the budget speech. Uh, out of the other two that weren't true, which was the most true? So who came second? <laughs> <laughs> That's an extremely complicated question. Um, I don't know. No, you see, the thing, the thing about the budget one is that we, we, all week we were going to fake a budget story, you know, make some stupid thing up to do with oh, the budget, yeah. mm. and then a thing stupider than the thing we made up <laughs> actually <laughs> happened. <laughs> um, do, you, do you want to know what word Cameron used to explain the economy after the budget? Yes, please. Mine? Mine? <laughs> uh, no, he, he called it stuck. He says the economy is stuck. <laughs> it's stuck because of that twat. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get in and yeah. sort it. He, says, he it, just does it in kind of... He's, he's, yeah, basically he's the, very blokey now, isn't the he? The economy's stuck. Yeah. Britain is broken. Osborne said the budget was... Shafted. No. <laughs> he, he, he actually said the budget was empty. <laughs> Here's a picture of Chief Secretary to the Treasury, Liam Byrne. Cameron called him Baldemort. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, in a way, That's it's not allowed. It's well, it is. It shouldn't be allowed. But at the same time, Liam Byrne, you shouldn't feel sorry for him. When he started working at the Treasury, he sent an eleven-page document 
entitled Working with Liam Byrne, round to the whole department, giving a series of detailed instructions, including never put anything to me unless you understand it and can explain it to me in 60 seconds. <laughs> what an arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> Two of you believed in the uh, the pensioners we competition. Yeah. yeah. For me, it was the um, the fake French lady. That that was what did it for me. But, yeah, but they had the French, French lady was real. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't go to France and get a French lady. They they found footage of a crazy French lady. <laughs> <laughs> the Crilly footage the Crilly we lady, yeah. we faked, but the French footage we found. Shappy, you went for the, the the political story about the Queen. Do you think that's the kind of the kind of thing they start they always start picking on the queen's clothes when they don't know what else to talk about they go oh she wore that hat in 73 at her friend's house for tea and everyone goes oh did she really and Anne once wore a frock that she wore on her first date with Prince Philip <laughs> that's her dad um... <laughs> <laughs> well they're a funny lot yeah <laughs> and I'm afraid at the end of that round I keep all the points So, you've, uh, you've all been living together in a house for a week. That's not normal. <laughs> no. How was it? Did you have a nice time? It was very restful, but the thing is, Miranda was convinced the house was haunted, so we didn't sleep a lot. There was only, I'm only saying there was one ghost. What did it look like? Well... Did it look I, like no, Rob or Shappy? <laughs> <laughs> did it go... <laughs> no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop talking because I will come across insane and doctors will be ready to take me away. It held right. your hand, though. Well, that's how you've done it. The way, <laughs> the way you told the story, now correct me if, if I'm getting this wrong, is that you woke up because you felt you felt a hand over your throat and you and you were doing this so that it wouldn't strangle you and then you woke up and you were sort of doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm sure I'm doing this. Yeah. yeah. We do have a clip of you in the house. <laughs> he keeps talking about this Abby that he's married to, but you know, we all know Abby's David. <laughs> oh my god! That's what I call the end of Jenga. <laughs> piece that I told you to pick, that wouldn't have fallen down then. That game would last longer. Let it go! <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, and it's back to the newspapers. Three fresh stories, and again, only one of them genuinely did feature in the papers while you were in the bubble. The other two we faked. Here's story A. How dare you? This is the news that whilst on a tour of New Zealand, Princess Anne's hair was compared to a cottage loaf <laughs> by a fashion designer whom she'd just met. <laughs> Chappie. <laughs> First impressions? I don't think that's true. I mean, when you meet a royal, a member of the royal family, the words cottage loaf aren't the first things <laughs> that might pop into your head. I must get a stamp, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that joke is uh, to, uh, copyright Stephen Fry in 1988. On, uh, whose line is it anyway? Then he decides to come clean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, OK, uh, moving on, let's have a look at story B. Lightning strikes twice. Here we have the news that the tabloid's favourite lotto lout, Michael Carroll, who won £9.7 million back in 2002, has won again, although this time he's only trousered a measly £338,000. Any thoughts, Miranda? Depressingly, I think that can be true. I think people who gamble and win always win again. <laughs> if, if that's true, I'm surprised Ladbrokes don't use it as a slogan. <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but I sort of wish it were true, because it's always fun when a deeply undesirable person wins wins the lottery and everyone gets very upset and they go but this is terrible it's, it's as if it's some kind of um is it some kind of uh, l lottery um, <laughs> <laughs> if we have a system where we <laughs> randomly give out large sums of money to people yes. sometimes it's going to go to an asshole <laughs> <laughs> well let's have a look at story c this is the curse of Sheila's wheels. This is the news uh -huh. that all three women who starred in those annoying Sheila's wheels adverts <laughs> have since injured themselves in separate car accidents. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think, Shelby? I would love that to be true. Not that I wish them harm. Hang on. Imagine those... the, end, the end of the advert. Do 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 the Sheila's wheels, and then the sound effect of. <laughs> 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 That's kind of what, I, what yeah. I'm going to hear now at the end of that ad every time. 
<laughs> and there's a little photo of one of them with a neck brace on that doesn't really look like any of the top three. Um, she looks the middle one. The middle oh, one. you're being very forensic with your photo analysing. <laughs> OK, well, um, <coughs> I'll just recap the story. Sorry, I really coughed. Is it A, Princess Anne's <laughs> hair compared to a cottage loaf, B, Lotto Lamp Michael Carroll wins the lottery again, or C, all three actresses who starred in the Sheila's Wheels adverts have since been in car accidents? Can you vote A, B or C now, oh, please? Oh, no. Oh. Rob's gone for Princess Anne's hair. And, Rob, you're right. Oh. Princess Anne's hair was compared to a cottage loaf by a fashion designer whom she'd just met in New Zealand. The designer, Denise Lestrange Corbett, said, <laughs> The world's hairdressers at your beck and call, and your hair looks like a cottage loaf. <laughs> now, let's see a picture of this expert on hairstyling. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> sort of, it looks uh... like Peter Kay in drag. <laughs> <laughs> she also said after her chat with the royal, she was as boring as fucking batshit. <laughs> Uh, Chappie and Miranda, you went with the lightning strikes twice. It is possible that he'll win again because he does still buy tickets. As he says, I only do it because I know how much it will piss people off if I yeah. win again. <laughs> so no, none of you went with the, the curse of Sheila's wheels? No. 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 One of the reasons you might not have gone with it uh, is that it's misspelt. And it says the curse of Sheila's wheels. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes. To be fair to say, that is not a deliberate error, but, <laughs> but it's pleasing that that wasn't yeah. why you didn't believe it. <laughs> and then we're going, I'm not sure that photo is her. Really. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, at, at the end of that round, Robert gets a point. Thank you for my point. Thank you for the point. Right. Our final round is on the buzzer. I'll read you some news stories from the last week that may or may not be real. If you're first to buzz in, oh. please answer real or fake. If you're right, you win a point. If you're wrong, you lose a point. And I can tell you it's very close, but Miranda and Robert are both slightly ahead. <laughs> Which is a positive way of saying, Shappy's coming last. <laughs> Let's begin with... Having made 140 staff redundant, Barclay Card has asked them to go to India in order to train their replacements. <laughs> Miranda. Real. That's real. <laughs> Air New Zealand has apologised after a staff training manual warned that many Tongan passengers would attempt to drink the plane dry. <laughs> Chappie. Real. That's real. <laughs> <laughs> Comedian David Mitchell has announced he is to split from his long-term comedy partner Robert Webb in order to concentrate on a solo career. <laughs> Robert. Fake. It is fake. <laughs> Hell of a way to break it. <laughs> Heston Blumenthal's restaurant, The Fat Duck, is now serving froth seasoned with the salt of human tears. Uh, Randa. True. Real. <laughs> Neither. Fake. Fake. <laughs> I'm afraid I have to take your second answer of three. <laughs> it's fake. Tony Benn has admitted that he was drunk when he named his son Hillary. Uh, Randa. Real. Fake. Oh. <laughs> Joanna Lumley has severed her links with the Gurkhas after one of them goosed her. Uh. <laughs> fake. That is fake. <laughs> the Large Hadron Collider has blown up and there is very little left of Switzerland. <laughs> well, fake. That's fake. <laughs> and finally, Lancashire Council has chopped down over 6,000 trees at a beauty spot to stop the area being used for dogging. Uh, <laughs> fake. That's real. <laughs> no. yeah. So the winner is... Robert! Well, on that note, thank you to my guests, Miranda Hart, Robert Webb and Shappy Corsandi. Sadly, this is the last in the series, so never coming out of the bubble will be Hazel Blears, Keith Chegwin and Robert Mugabe. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> It's Thanksgiving and Noah's got himself a date and a whole heap of trouble. Heroes, the first of a double bill, starts at 11.55 here on BBC Two.